Hi everyone, John here from Greybeard3D. Today I'm going to be unboxing and assembling the Sane Smart uh, Ender 3 Pro. This is very similar to the Creality Ender 3 Pro. Uh, I have a few tips and tricks along the way that I learned from assembling my first one. The first one I assembled is going on printing right now, um, right in the background there. So I have it running very smoothly now. Um, let's go ahead and get started with this and uh, I'll tell you about everything going on today because we have quite a bit. So let's go ahead to a intro scene. Here we go. All right, so as I said, uh, yeah, we're, we're doing the Ender 3 Pro right now, but earlier today, uh, let me bring up a share desktop and desktop and transition. So earlier today, uh, we went ahead and talked about the Amazon Echo Sub. Uh, we unboxed that and we set that up and we played with it. Uh, we developed a Prusa slicer profile for the Ender 3 Pro. So if you have an Ender 3 Pro, uh, that's a good video to go uh, watch to make sure that, uh, you know, to see how to set it up in, in uh, Prusa slicer, which is a very good slicer. Uh, it's well maintained and they have a lot of profiles already built for you. Um, the other thing we did is we put together an engineering PC. Uh, so we unboxed all the parts for that. We put it all together live and installed Windows 10. Um, and now we're on the same smart Ender 3 Pro unboxing and assembly. And after this, uh, we're going to do a Prusa Slicer speed profile. So I'm going to show you how to get the most speed out of Prusa Slicer. Uh, the only thing that will actually limit your speed is your printer mechanics and how well the printer performs. Uh, look, subscribe and like and uh, ring the bell if you want to make sure you don't miss any other uh, videos today. Uh, these are going on uh, all day today. Um, so this is, this is uh, video number four. Uh, the Sane Smart Ender 3 Pro unboxing and build. So thank you for tuning in and let's go ahead and get started on this. Now let me see what I have here. Transition. Um, Alright, so right here I have the Sane Smart Ender 3 Pro. Uh, it's boxed up, it's never been opened. Uh, we're gonna open it here right now. We're gonna see what's what's going on inside here. Uh, and we're going to put it all together. So, um, if you caught, there was a live stream earlier this week, but unfortunately I had to remove that live stream. Uh, however, if you were lucky enough to catch it, then you would have seen uh, this unboxing already. Um, if you were lucky enough not to catch it, then uh, here we go. This is, this is going to be it. I'm going to move this closer so the other camera can kind of catch it too. Uh, so we have two cameras going right now. set that knife aside and we're going to open this up here okay so right inside here we have this flap here now the box is labeled we're supposed to open it from a certain end and it happens to be this end here um, so right up front here it looks like we have uh, some percentage off and we have a user manual the user manual on this is actually very good, um, and we'll go through that later and we'll see what it is. Now, the bed, uh, I wasn't too happy with because it overhangs and uh, it can sometimes hit the frame. So uh, perhaps it would be wise to take a pair of scissors and cut off a little bit of this bed to make it fit properly. But it is a magnetic bed, which is very nice when you're trying to remove a print. Uh, it really helps. Um, right over here, looks like we have a LCD controller. This is the control panel to the front of the printer. This assembly, um, this is not a bad assembly at all. Uh, it can go together in under an hour and it's something that you could do uh, with your kids if you wanted to. So we're just getting rid of certain things. Over here we have some uh, extrusions, some aluminum profiles, and these are going to make up like the, the frame, the tops and the sides and whatnot. Let me see, is that another extrusion or is that part of the frame? I think that's part of the frame. Uh, down here, we have the extruder motor. The extruder is what feeds filament over to the hot end. And we have a X motor, and this is what drives the carriage back and forth. So that is an assembly that's already assembled for us. They did all that work for us. 
so we don't have to do it. So it's going to make your life easier. All right, let's see what else we have. Uh, in here, it looks like we have a power supply. Let's get rid of some of this. It's really in there, though. Kind of tricky to, to get it out. There we go. So here's our power supply. Now, uh, this is like tip number one. And uh, they'll tell you to do this as well. But you want to check this switch. And in there, you want to make sure it has the right voltage for where you're at. Right now, it says 230. And that's very bad because we are using, in the US, 110. So we want to flip the switch. Now, when I say 110, we're using 110, 115, 120, whatever's the closest to that. So we flip the switch up, and now it says 115. And we just did that with a screwdriver. We just put it in there and slid it down or slide it up. And that's how you set the voltage. You want to make sure you do that before you continue. All right. What's next here? So this assembly all has to come out at once, but there's some loose bits. This is the actual hot end. So there's our nozzle inside there. That's the carriage that holds on the nozzle, and there's the wires and the tube that goes to the nozzle. So we have that. We're going to leave that right up there. Uh, these wires look like they're all fine, so this whole assembly should lift out. And we're going to set this down right there for now. So that's fine. Now we can lift out this layer of the belt, of the uh, packaging, and we can see what's next. So right here in the middle, we have another uh, set of extrusion, and it looks like our threaded rod is in there too. You don't want that to fall and hit the ground. So you just want to set that down carefully. So we're just going to set that there. Uh, we have a scraper. This is very helpful if you need to use it, but with the magnetic bed, you hopefully don't need to use it. Uh, no, tip number two. When using the scraper, use a lot of caution because a lot of people will take that scraper and run it right into their hand. And I've seen it so many times online. Uh, this is the Z motor. This is what moves it up and down. This is part of the filament holder. This is where you would put your spool of plastic. This is another part of the filament holder. Again, that's where you'd put your spool of plastic. We have a power cord. We will use that later. Um, we have a bracket for, I think it's the Z. I think it was for the Z. Uh, we have our package of screws. We have a package of tools. So we're probably only going to use one tool in here today. I have all the other tools that I need. Um, and finally, uh, we have, it looks like, an end stop, an adjustment bracket, and some other bits, um, and some extra filament and whatnot. And that's it. It's empty in there. I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of this packing material in here because once we build it, we can't really use this box anymore. And we shouldn't need to use this box anymore. Um, the only reason you'd need this box is if you somehow had to send it back, which means you've had a very bad time. <laughs> Uh, so we're just going to fold this all up and move this aside. Sorry for the noise. All right, let's get rid of this. And let's see what we have here. So the first thing we have is the actual unit right here. Let's take a look here because this is where I found, um, I found one of the problems with the previous one. And I didn't find this on the initial stream either, so this is kind of new. Um, and let me, while I do that, let me just verify that uh, everything on YouTube looks good. So, just one second, please. All right, so it does look like the video is coming through just fine. Um, in the upper left corner is where I have my recent subscribers. Go ahead and subscribe, uh, and I would really really appreciate it plus it lets you know next time I'm doing another uh, video which I'm trying to do a lot more videos I have done over or I'm coming up on 20 hours of video this month 
um, or in the last 30 days. Um, so that's, that's also very exciting for me. Uh, but uh, that just shows you the rate of uh, output that I'm doing right now. Uh, so right now we just want to kind of like loosen up all these wires and get them, get them set aside out of the way. Um, just so they're all in the right place and whatnot. Uh, and we don't want them to, like this wire here, we don't want any of this to be kind of like uh, getting hung up anywhere. The power wire, which is this wire right here, we want to feed that right underneath the uh, big heavy uh, rod under here because uh, it's going over there to where the power supply sits. And then these other short wires are actually going to hook to something that we're going to put right there. So that's, that's pretty much the entire base. Now here comes one of the tips, uh, something I noticed, and you really need a flat surface to do this, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and try to do it from here. Um, something I noticed is the base uh, is not, or was not square or flat, and that's because it was probably assembled wrong. So we're going to check it while we're here before we go on to the rest of the build. Uh, let me get rid of some of these mats because these mats are going to kind of throw it all off. All right, so what you want to do, and this one feels pretty good, what you want to do is kind of tap the corners. Uh, so you, you tap every corner and you see if there's any wobble. If there's any wobble at all in your base, you want to loosen these four screws and loosen the four screws on the other side and press down on the high spot till there's no more wobble. And then while you're holding it down, tighten up all four screws and then hold down the other side and tighten up all four screws. This one doesn't have it. The other printer did have it and I had to fix it. Um, but you just wanna check that now uh, before you continue because it's easier now without everything on, on the printer. Um, so here we have the control panel. I'm going to go ahead and follow the um, instructions in the book because they were helpful for me. I felt they were very clearly laid out. Uh, they, weren't, uh, they weren't very difficult to read, so. Let's see what we have here. So you get a nice table of contents with the instructions. Uh, you get your notices and safety and whatnot. You get a diagram of all the parts that you should have received. So you should check to see if everything is there. You also get a diagram of your extrusions. Later on when you're assembling it, if you can't tell which piece you need, uh, because some of these start to look the same, uh, you can come back to page six and refer to it to see if uh, you found it, right? Okay, let's go on to the next page. Oh, uh, here it also covers the screws you're getting. So you're getting um, 25s, 18s, 16s, and 45s. Um, so that's easy. And we go to this, what they call quick start, which is essentially the build. So the first thing we're gonna do is put on the um, left and right extrusions. And so we gotta find those. So let's unwrap some of these extrusions here. Uh, here's a set of extrusions. Let's unwrap these and see if these match. Um, I'm going to just use my knife wherever that went. <clears throat> All right. So there we go, there's our extrusions. Now these are single extrusions, so they're not what we need. We need double extrusions. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and set these aside and pick up our double extrusions. These, these were the ones that came in the second layer of the box. Um, inside there is a rod that keeps wanting to fall out. This is our linear, uh, this is our uh, lead screw. So we wanna set our lead screw aside. You don't want it to get dirty or dusty. There's grease on it and it will pick up any kind of hair uh, or any kind of uh, crumbs or anything. So as a tip, leave it in that black sleeve and be very careful with it. You don't want to bend it or anything. It's going to greatly affect your printing performance if you get that dirty or bent. All right, so here we go. There's one of our extrusions. We'll set that down. Let's try to get the other one out.
this cling wrap is uh, very tough. It's much thicker than the stuff you normally deal with. And there's the other extrusion. All right, so we're going to go ahead and throw that that aside. And before I continue, I'm going to put these mats back under my work surface here. Uh, let's not let that get away. Um, and I'm just doing this for a little protection for the table. I don't want the wife mad at me. Okay. This motor here, what you see here, this is the back of the machine. So everything back here is the back of the machine. Up here, everything up here is the front of the machine. The machine has a very nice label right here that tells you the dimensions of the machine, the dimensions of print area, um, exactly how much power it uses and how much it weighs. Uh, very helpful if you're, if you're configuring this in any software or anything else, it helps you know how much you can print. So it's very helpful to have that label right there on the machine to read. So we have our extrusions. The one that goes, here we go. So the one that goes on the left is this one with these two holes. Um, and the one that goes on the right is this one with just the two holes at the bottom. So left and right. And that's from the front of the machine. So we're gonna face the front of the machine toward us. Let me rotate it around. When you're rotating the machine, make sure that you don't set it on any of your wires. You don't wanna crush anything. So you want to be very careful when you when you rotate it and, and move it. And here we go. So now this is another tip because uh, I don't think they really cover it that well in the manual. Um, maybe they do. Yeah. So one side of this actually has the hole notched out a little bit wider and it's actually hitting the edges here you see how that edge is nicked and that nick you want that forward because that's where your screw is going and that little nick is giving it enough room for the screw to fit through um, and that's that's happening later but we just need to be aware of that so let's get our screws out because to put these on they want the m 545s these are probably going to be the biggest screws it has so let's open up our screw pack see what we have Throw that aside. All right, so these are the biggest we have. These are probably the M545s, and they are. They have it on the label there. I'm sorry, I can't get it to focus on the label there. And we have a bunch of other screws, and we'll get to these in a minute. But let's use these M545s. There's only four, very easy. We're using two per extrusion. So for our first extrusion, let's rotate this a little bit. Our first extrusion again you want that kind of like that nicked outside forward because this is the front of the machine let's rotate it like this and let's get a screw in the bottom and start it so you can see where it goes right underneath there here let me make sure your camera is on it so it goes right in here and we want to just go ahead and push one through uh, where's my wrench if I don't have a wrench I can't do this right <laughs> so this is a four millimeter Allen wrench very helpful to have one of your own. The machine does come with it, but I like to have um, slightly better tools than the freebies. So, and we'll go ahead and get this started. Now we're not gonna fully tighten it yet because we wanna get the next one started. Okay, and screw this one in. And then we will use the shorter side to get more tightness off this. And while we do it, you wanna make sure that this right here is pretty much in line. Let me make sure I'm on screen. So right there where these two ends meet, you just wanna make sure it's level, it's not twisted, because you can twist it a little bit forward and backwards. You see that twist? You just want it to be um, even. So, and let's go ahead and continue this. So we'll tighten it down. We'll go to the next one. We're not tightening all the way, we're just tightening a little bit each time. 
and you don't want to crush it. You don't want to kill this. You just want it tight till uh, it feels like it's it's really in there. It's really bite biting in. There we go. And we double check while we're here. Double check that you're still in line. And right there, it looks like I'm very much in line. So we're good to go. All right. Let's build the other side of this. So the other side is the same way. We have an extrusion. Uh, it doesn't appear that there's a front and back to this. There might be evidence of a little bit of mark from the tooling, but it doesn't really appear there's a front and back. And we'll just double check the instructions here. And you can see it says to keep the two dots lower. See the two dots on the, the extrusion there? So we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna tilt it up and we're gonna put in one screw and we're gonna get it started. So let's tilt this up. Let's get one screw loaded. So it's the same way. And let's go ahead and put the extrusion on. It's hard to do this uh, one-handed. If you have a helper, it would help a lot. Um, even even have a um, even have your kid as a holder or whatever. But most of this assembly is pretty easy. Uh, you could let your kid assemble this, um, and then you just go through and double check. You know some of these kind of like tips I'm telling you, and make sure things are tight. Uh, but the assembly itself is fairly easy. And where's my last screw? And let's get this last screw in there. And I'm the same way. I'm double checking to see that my edge is aligned there. I don't want to. Uh, uh, I don't want it to be uneven. Okay. All right. And then we're going to just tighten this down. We're using the shorter end now so we get more torque. Okay. There we go. We have a, a frame on our printer. It's looking really good right now. Let's go to step two on this. So step, step two is to install the control panel and to install the power supply. So pretty simple there. I wonder what that symbol means. I don't know what that symbol means. Oh, it's reminding you to check the voltage to make sure you're set to the right voltage for your country. Um, so if you're in the US, it is set wrong out of the box. You have to set it before you power it on or you could damage it. Um, for the front panel, we need the M58s. And for the power supply, we need the M420s, and I'm looking for the bag that says M420. M420, there's only two in this package. So let's go ahead and do the power supply first. It's pretty easy, so we take our power supply. There's the on off switch. Uh, the one is on and the zero is off. Uh, and when you set it back there, Make sure you pull that out too. But when you set it back here, you want to get your cable going underneath. Here, I'll rotate the whole thing for you. So, let's see. So you want to get your cable underneath there. And you might have a feeling to set it down like that, but that's not actually what you want. Uh, when, you're, when you're actually doing this, it's going to be elevated a little bit. So get your get your screw out and get the right size uh, Allen key for it. Let me find my tools. So <clears throat> I don't think it's the same one. I think it's a three millimeter. Yes, it's three millimeters. So get your three millimeter Allen wrench, which came with the kit or get your own. 
And let me raise the camera for you. Uh-oh, somebody's at my door. Please hold on a second. Amazon. Amazon's a knocking. All right, so we got the top screw in, and we don't want to make it super tight right now. Uh, what we need to do now is get the bottom screw started. And the reason we don't want the top screw tight is because for the bottom screw, we might need a lift or lower or something to get this thing to go in. And we want to find that hole, right? Um, sometimes it even helps if you actually unscrew the top screw quite a bit to help you see where that hole is, because it's it's a tricky alignment. The bed could be in the way too. The bed is magnetic and it overhangs. And since it overhangs, it could be pushing against the power supply, making it very hard to mount it. Uh, so once you have both screws in, you wanna go ahead and just start to tighten this down. And just kind of go back and forth until they're both tight. It does not need to be super torqued. It just needs to be there. It does not provide any structural rigid rigidity either. Uh, some printers, the power supply actually provides a support for the vertical frame. Uh, this printer, it does not. It's just sitting here. It's a very lightweight power supply. Okay, now we do the screen. So for the screen, easy stuff. Uh, for the screen, we have down here, it sits right here, and we have two screws that fit right in those holes. Um, the holes behind my hand. So there's two holes there. So what we're gonna do is get our two screws from this bag. There were four screws in the bag. We're gonna use some of them later. And it still uses the three millimeter uh, uh, drive. So we'll, we'll stick with the three mil. We'll get one screw in there and we'll try to line it up as best as we can. Somewhere somewhere we're looking for the hole there we go and here's the other screw and we'll put it in that one now your top screw shouldn't be fully tight yet so that way you can rotate this this a little bit to get the bottom screw to fit and then once you get that bottom screw in you can tighten it and then you can tighten the top screw. Okay, and so your screen should not move anymore. It should be firm. Okay, moving on to page 10. So these things were a little bit weird for me. These weird twisty nuts. Um, they, uh, they're they kind of weird. You want to unscrew them a lot, and then uh, when you start to screw them in in the, the slot, you just kind of pray that they're gonna rotate into position because they don't do it consistently. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit tricky, but to do this, we need another part. This is for our Z switch. So there's our Z switch. Let's get out some of the other stuff we need from here. So we need these things and these things. So these are extra nozzles and stuff. You do not need this at all right now. So we can set that aside. This is your uh, memory card. The memory card comes in a USB uh, reader, so you can use the reader for your computer. These are some extra nozzles and extra clips. You will need one of these later. And then this is your Z end stop. The only other thing in the bag is some filament sample. So here's our Z end stop. It is only a switch. It's a little clicker. Um, that's pretty much it. But it has on it already these two nuts. And these are the nuts that are going to go into the extrusion. But we need to make sure they rotate the right way when we do it. Um, the screw size we're going to need. Let's see which screw size this is. It's the three millimeter. So let's rotate everything again. Let's set that on there. Set that there. 
And remember, when you're rotating, make sure you're not crushing your wires. You're crushing something, I think. Okay. So here's where this is going, right over here. And I believe it goes just like this. Yep, just like that on the side here. Um, there's a little notch here that, that catches to help it be at the right height. However, I felt this was too low, um, but we might adjust that later. So the first thing we want to do, because these, these nuts in the channel are not rotating, you want to back it out enough so the nut will rotate and then tighten it down. And we're going to do that for this other one too. And you just want to make sure that it's, it's really on there. Now this is plastic. You don't want to pull too hard. It will break. So that was it. Um, it is tightened down. It is set at this level. However, I believe this needs to be a little bit higher later and we're going to find out how high it needs to be. Um, okay, the next thing we need is to put our Z motor on. Let's go ahead and rotate. I'm trying to rotate and not crush my wires. This power supply wire is really annoying me. Maybe I can tuck it away for now. Okay. So the Z motor, and you see the bed is uh, a little bit off here. There we go. Um, here we go. There's our Z motor. Pretty simple. It goes right there, just like that, but we need to find the nuts for it. So they have to be in one of these bags. Um, we need, yep, four by 18. So we're looking for the four by 18s. There it is, M4 by 18. All right, and these look like they take a smaller drive. These are taking a two and a half millimeter drive. Um, and all we're gonna do is, is put the screw in there, make sure it catches appropriately on the extrusion. And remember, you, you don't wanna cross thread any of this. You wanna make sure it's turning smoothly and evenly. If you feel it catching at all, um, you might be cross-threaded, and you don't want to do that to aluminum. So, now because they're pan-head, um, they're not pan-head, what are they called? I forget now. But essentially, because they're countersunk like that, it should help align this motor and keep it up and down. Uh, so we should be okay with that. The next thing it wants is the threaded rod. So the threaded rod... We will stick right in there. Pretty simple. And uh, I don't think it tells you to tighten it, but we're gonna tighten this threaded rod. I think that was a problem I noticed last time. It never says, hey, tighten your threaded rod. And you wanna make this really tight because uh, if you don't, just double check, give that threaded rod a little pull. Make sure it won't lift out for you. You want it tight. All right, moving on. So, uh, let's do this. Well, I guess we're doing this backwards. That's fine. So we're looking for the right extrusion. So we have an extrusion here. Uh, this is step 12 or page 12. Um, we have an extrusion here with two holes on each side. That's not the one we want. We're looking for the extrusion with a triple hole. Uh, on a side, which is this one right here. Now the triple hole, you see this big cutout here? That's actually for um, when this mounts up, and I forget which way it mounts up, but when it mounts up, uh, one of these screw holes uh, fits in that cutout. I forget which, but we'll figure it out. I'll show you when I get there. So uh, the first piece we need Oh, it's not even the extruder yet. It looks like it is, or it is the extruder. Sorry, I was looking at the hot end. Um, so it's this big, big chunk here that we're hooking up to this. 
Um, and this is where that screw hole comes in play. So this rod screws into this hole and this hole. And you see that screw head is meant to actually fit right there in that cutout. And that's why, the, that's why you have that big cutout, just to give room. The other thing it has is it has access for you to be able to um, fit a tool in there to loosen and tighten that, that particular screw there in case you need it to for some reason. So we have this like that, and here's, um, here's a tricky part. We have to feed uh, a screw in here. Oh, I got somebody chatting, sorry. Hey Kit, how you doing? Sorry, I missed the chat, man. Yeah, hey, Sholm's on. A whole bunch of people now. Um, so let's see what screws we need. So for this rod, we need the M416s. So not there. Here we go, M416s. So let's get two of those out. And I just heard the little Baby Yoda finish. Let's check him out. This is printed on the same machine I'm building now. So here is the Baby Yoda. Unfortunately, I print it in red, but that's okay. It's on the flex plate, so we can just flex it a little bit to get them off. Look at that bottom layer. Looks really good. Um, and so everything you see here is support material, and we have to kind of rip it away. And we have to see, did our support settings that we kind of hijacked from Prusa work out okay? He has little fingers. We want to be careful not to break those fingers. We have some ear supports. That's cool. Another ear support. Pretty cool. Another hand back here. Again, we, we need to be careful not to break his fingers. So I'm trying to give more downward force and not really a... Um, oh, there went a little piece. It wasn't his finger, though. I'm just trying to give it more of a downward force and not trying to pull away from the model. Yes, this is how to remove things. <clears throat> hey, Derek, how you doing? And sometimes what helps uh, remove these are these clippers. I recommend everybody get these for 3D printing. These are by Hakko, H-A-K-K-O, I think. And they are freaking great. So let's try to clean this up. So we got it almost all off. There we go. Hopefully, hopefully. Looks like we haven't broken the finger yet, I don't think. And just need to get one more finger free. There we go. So that hand's free. Looks good, no broken fingers. Let's go on over, let's pull this material away. Let's try to get this hand free. It's a little bit of a pain here. Um, those little tiny fingers and just kind of dealing with this to get this out. Uh, this is a model by Chris Fries. Fries? I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I'm sorry, Chris. Uh, but he put this model out for free on my mini factory. So if you're interested in printing this on your own printer, go ahead and download it. Uh, at least before they, you know, sometimes uh, companies like Disney uh, force uh, models to be taken down. So get it while it's hot. Because <laughs> uh, if it gets forced to be taken down, uh, then that will be it. Okay, I think I got the last finger free. And we'll just clean up some of this, some of this little garbage here. Let's clip that out. So there we go. Look at little baby Yoda there. Pretty great print, honestly. I mean, this is this is a printer I built yesterday. It's the exact same printer as this, and um, very little stringing. There is some support material I still have to clean up on his hand right here. That's why it looks rough. Um, I just didn't get it all off, um, but it will take more time just to kind of clean up those little little nubs but that's fine the toes look good the layer lines look very consistent so he's looking good not bad for a, a slicer profile that we just built today I guess that shows it works <laughs> so 
Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I think the support came off rather normal uh, for something like this. Um, so when you're dealing with little fingers and stuff, you want to be extra careful removing it. If you're dealing with large objects, you can just rip it off. Uh, no problem. But his ears came out pretty smooth. I think I would clip just a little bit there with the clippers here. It's just extra support material down there just to clean that out. But that is a cool Yoda, guys. Awesome model, Chris. Awesome job. Everybody should go download that one. He also has other models of Yoda, baby Yoda out there, um, you know, in different poses and stuff like that. So back to the build. Pardon the interruption. Uh, I had screws somewhere. Okay, here we go. So we're using the M416s. Let's get rid of that bag. Throw those on the table here. And we only need two of them, but it, this is the tricky part because we got to get the um, we got to get the M416s in there, um, like through the midway. So we have to kind of like reach through and kind of get it started like that. I need you to print another multicolored fossil for us. Uh oh. You knocked them over. Yeah, you know, uh, I do a lot of glue. I might have the wrong size Allen wrench for this. I'm just seeing if I can find the hole here. Yeah, I might have the wrong size Allen wrench. Let me find, maybe it's the three. No, it definitely is not the three. It was the two and a half. Just having a hard time finding the hole. Sometimes it helps to jump to the other one and just kind of try to get that one started instead. And sometimes it just doesn't want to work for you at all. <laughs> so let's see what's happening here. Let's pull this away a little bit. I mean, there's the screw holes. Looks okay. It's just, it is a tight fit. There we go. So that's one going in. And... Here's the other one, and it should go in now too. I think I was just too far over, and I'm sorry about the focus, everybody. There we go. Um, and this is the same sort of pattern. I'm not trying to tighten all the way until I make sure it's all straight. I'm gonna make sure that the rod is straight with this top surface up here. I want this to be uh, uh, flush, so I'm just gonna kinda hold it with my hand and as I tighten, make sure it kind of stays there and it doesn't swivel or anything like that. So. You want that pretty tight. So it feels like it's, it's all one piece. Um, literally feels like a club that you could uh, knock somebody out with. <clears throat> Not that I suggest knocking people out. Okay, moving on. Um, step six, uh, looks like that we're putting the, it looks like the extruder on this. So what we have here, let me get this to the right orientation. Uh, what we have here is the extruder motor is already on here. We're gonna put the hot end on here. Um, the extruder motor, goes toward the back of the machine so it's actually going to lay or it's actually going to set in here something like that so that you can see the extruder motors in the back of the machine and then toward the front of the machine is our hot end so that's how we know when we're when we're doing this um, when we put the hot end on here we want the hot end to be forward so it's opposite of the extruder motor and you see that so extruder motor Hot end. Uh, hot end is facing down. The nozzle is down. So there's our nozzle, and that's that's down. And you just want to make sure you have it like that. 
Um, wow, guys. So yesterday, when I assembled it, these wheels were really loose. And the way you fix that is you get a wrench and you turn this, and it will actually make this wheel, this bottom wheel, get closer and farther from the rod. It only works on the bottom wheel, but you want to make sure it's tight and it has no wobble to it. This one is actually pretty good, so we're not going to adjust it if we don't have to. Um, there's a few other tricks here, and I'll, I'll show you when I get there. But let's get on to this next piece. The next piece we're doing, we're on page 13 here. We're putting on this plate. And this plate goes on the same side as the extruder motor. So let's get the plate. <clears throat> here we go. Pretty easy. Multi-material frosty. Yes. Um, so all of them broke or some of them broke? Like, do you just need a new broom or what's the deal there? Uh, and this plate is being assembled with M416. So we have two more of those. So it's the same screws we just used. And we are going to put the plate on. The plate looks like it goes right like so. Like so. I'll try to show you. It's hard to hold all this weight in one hand and manage the screws and whatnot. Again, uh, you'll, you'll see this screw here. Is, you see that cutout? It's made so the screw kind of fits there. That way you're not, a, you're not um, uh, to, uh, that way you're flush. So, so let's go ahead and try to get one of these screws started. We're gonna try to start this by hand. And I'll rotate the camera in a second. Rip Frosty. There we go. And you want to uh, just, you don't want it fully tight yet. You want to get the next next screw in. And you want to check some alignment. So I don't know how many screws we've put in this so far. It might be only 12, but we're almost done. Um, and once you feel you're aligned the right way, which I like to just keep the top of this in line with the extrusion, then go ahead and tighten everything down. Uh, so the problem with streaming frosty print is it's such a long print. Um, it is not, uh, it is not straightforward, you know. All right, step seven, we're going to wrap the belt. Um, this step, I felt they did kind of backwards, um, in my opinion, because the step after we put on this thing, and this is the belt tightener, I'm going to put the belt tensioner on before I wrap the belt because it was kind of a pain yesterday to do it opposite. It was yesterday, or maybe it was a day before I did the stream. Uh, you can't find it anymore. It is no longer on YouTube, but um, I'm just showing you the lessons learned here. Uh, this is using the same little um, uh, twisty nuts that we dealt with before. So the same thing applies. We just need to make sure we get these right. So let me go ahead and set this down like this and find the right screw for it. It is the M3, or the three millimeter, sorry, three millimeter screw. And I'm just gonna do it like this, uh, just because it's hard to hold everything at once. And we just want these in here like this. And you want the tensioner as close to the extrusion as possible, because right now we want it loose. Um, and we're gonna tighten it later. And all I'm trying to do is make, make sure that these, um, these nuts that are in here twist properly into position to lock it in place. All right, now here's our belt. So right there is our tensioner. It's, it's already set up for us, it's in line. So the belt actually runs through this channel here. So that's why that's in line there. So here's our belt. What's really nice about the ender uh, is the belt is already pre-cut and pre-measured, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, a lot of other printer assemblies, you have to like cut the belt yourself and everything. Uh, so this is pretty nice. Uh, so we're going back 
uh, to step number seven on page 14 to run the belt. So uh, the first thing we want to do with it is run it through this channel. Make sure I get you on screen here. We're running it through the channel underneath these rollers here. Um, something that might help is for you to just roll over the belt. And I have it kind of I have it kind of twisted here. I'm trying to force it to untwist, but it's refusing. So I'm going to roll over the belt one more time and try to do it right this time. It's just with that brass end on there, it can be sometimes hard to get it um, flat and in line without it twisting. So we're going to roll over it again and pull the belt through. I'm just trying to pull the belt through and feed it out through the end here. Sorry about the movement there, but we're going to feed it out through this end down here. And pull that through. And you want to feed it back in right around that sprocket in there. So you want to go right around that sprocket and go right out the other side if you can find uh, where it goes. Sometimes it helps to have a little needle nose pliers to kind of pull the brass end there. You see that's the brass end that we're trying to deal with. I'm just going to try to pull it a little bit with my tool here. There we go. And once you get it, you want it to pop out like that because we're going to hook it up to the um, axis, the hot end here. So right in here, you see we have a slot. We want to essentially just kind of tuck the belt into that slot if we can. So the belt's kind of tucked into that slot. Um, you want it to kind of pull up tight to that, that brass piece, and hopefully it does when we, uh, when we pull on it. And then the other side, we're just going to wrap around uh, the other end, and we're coming over here, and we're going to try to get this this piece on here. And so there we go. We slid on there, and we're sli we're on there. So there's our two brass ends, and we just ran our belt. That might have been the hardest part about this whole assembly there. Uh, but our belt is fully installed. All we have to do now is tighten it. So to tighten the belt, we use this tensioner here. And we take our, I think, where'd it go? We take our tensioner and we loosen it up if you tighten it all the way down. So that's one loose, two loose. And you want to pull on it. Make sure your belt is actually on your, on your um, uh, sleeve right there. So you want to pull on it um, while the belt is installed and make it tight and you can you can even use your thumb over here and give it a push let me back you up a little bit so you can give it a push and so the belt's wrapped here and you want to make sure the belt's wrapped on the motor where it's supposed to be and once you're happy with it you get one of these screws to tighten down and once you have one screw tightened down the other screw should be willing to participate And so we have a tight belt now. There we go. Uh, wow, you're typing a lot of stuff, man. Okay. There we go. We have tightened our belt. We're on step number nine. And step nine is, is the fun part. Uh, it's, it's about installing this thing. There's a little trick to it though, and so this is another tip. And they kind of refer to it in the manual. But on this extruder end, you see these screws here? These hold this, this coupler on, but this coupler might not be lined up properly. Now using a uh, two millimeter Allen, you can loosen this up just a little bit. We don't want it super loose, but just enough wiggle so when we're mounting this onto the uh, printer, um, it has enough wiggle to play. And the other tip we want to look at is when we're mounting this, uh, because you've been like moving the extruder everywhere and everything else, 
this wire might, might have become twisted a few times over. You want to make sure there's no twist in this wire. Now this one actually appears, although it's pulling in one direction, it actually appears pretty flat. Um, but we can twist it around and you want to kind of twist it. You want to twist it so it has a little bit of a push toward the outside edge. Um, not toward the motor, you want it so it's kind of going this way. But you just want to make sure your twist is right because later on we don't want this like getting under this motor or anything. We want it over here. Um, I think we'll be fine. There's not enough twist, like there's enough twist in it right now. So uh, just double check that. So when you're assembling it, you do end up twisting the extruder around a few times and you could have gotten that out of alignment. And all we're doing right now is just getting the rollers uh, onto the extrusions here. So there's some rollers up here. And so you see how it's fitting down here uh, and it's fitting over here. So this roller here and to help it, you can actually roll the roller itself and it will actually help it fit. And now our lead screw here is what's in the way. And we want to like line it up with this brass coupler here and then start feeding it down. And now this roller is the one that's caught. We want to just give that a twist. And if it's not too tight, you should be able to twist that on and we can continue. All right, let's check some rollers. So these feel pretty tight. So if I turn any of these rollers by hand, the whole thing moves. Let's check this roller. That feels tight. You just want to feel the tightness of these rollers. Make sure none of them spin freely. If you're able to spin a roller freely, actually see how I can spin that freely? That's not good. So this is, this is still too loose. So we're going to have to tighten this up. Um, and then uh, you have another set of rollers on your bed and you want to check those rollers too and make sure that none of those spin freely. So you can just reach under, feel the rollers, or you can kind of turn the, the machine up. Okay, so this, this roller over here I can actually spin freely. So I'll try to tighten that one as well. So let's tighten this roller. Uh, we're going to get the wrench out of the toolkit. <clears throat> the toolkit also comes with one of these. I don't like these things. This is a poker to clear the nozzle. I kind of throw those out. I don't want the people who are receiving these machines to use them either because I don't want to have to fix the machine after they shove one of those stupid things in there. Okay. My opinion. So let me actually rotate this because it's hard for me to do that backwards. Uh, we're going to turn this this way. Again, make sure we're not crushing any wires here. Um, what you'll notice, I'm just trying to get you as close as possible, maybe maybe even closer than that. I am all hung up on wires. Stabilize. Okay. Um, so you see this hex nut in here. That's the nut we're trying to turn. It's it's the hex nut on the on the roller itself, and we want to give it a turn until this uh, roller tightens up, and you can actually see it start to move. So let's turn it a little bit. Okay, it's already better. Let's give it another turn. You don't want it too tight. You don't want to be crushing it. Yep, so that's it. So what I did is I held this screw in place. I'm not turning the screw, I'm just turning this wrench. And to make it tighter, I'm turning it clockwise. And that makes the roller get closer to the extrusion. Pretty easy. Let's look at the bed one. I did not do the bed one yesterday. So let's look at the bed one on this. So we will rotate this up. I don't know how far over I can go with this. Um, and see what we can get to on the bed. So it looks like the ones on the opposite side are the ones that are actually adjustable. Only the ones with the hex nuts are adjustable. So we're going to rotate this around and look at the other side. If you don't tighten these, what you might see are uh, little like ripples in your prints. Your prints might not be as smooth as you expect them to be. 
Um, if you tighten them too much, you may also end up with other types of artifacts in your print. But you can see up here, uh, we have two rollers and they have hex nuts on them. And if I rotate them, this one rotates freely. This one, let me see, that one's pretty good. This one just rotates too freely. So I'm gonna give it a clockwise turn. <clears throat> now this is gonna be very difficult for me to do because I have to uh, hold up the printer, I have to give it a turn, and I have to hold the screw, and I have to keep the bed from moving. So that's actually quite a challenge right there. So let's see if I got it. I gave it a little bit of turn. No. It might even be worse. Maybe this one needs to go a different direction. Let's try one more time just to be sure. So I hope this is coming through on camera. All right. Um, let me move that wire out of your way just so you can see. So we're doing the same thing. So we gave it a turn and now we check it again. It's still, it's way loose now. So this one looks like it wants to turn counterclockwise. So why, why ever it needs to go counterclockwise. Ooh, almost lost the printer there. Oh. This is where uh, little helpers would be great. Um, why it needs to go counterclockwise and the other one goes clockwise, I don't know. Unless I did it backwards up there, but it definitely tightened up. Okay, now it's not turning anymore. We might be good. And the bed's tight. And the roller is tight. So when I turn the roller, and I, I'm sorry, you're off camera a little bit. When I turn the roller, the bed moves, not the roller. You don't want the roller slipping. Okay, so there we go. That one was counterclockwise. Maybe the other one was counterclockwise and I was upside down and backwards. So. When you're setting down, make sure you don't crimp any of your cables. Cool, cool, cool. All right, we checked our rollers. Uh, the other part of that step, remember how I told you to loosen up those uh, screws? That's up here. So these screws here, now we wanna kinda of give them a little bit of a tightening. That's the wrong size screw. That's two and a half, I need a two. Two, okay. You want to tighten these up a little bit. You don't want to get these over tight. Uh, if you get them over tight, you'll feel it's very hard to move your axis. This actually feels pretty easy to move. So that means I can tighten them some more without worrying. Um, they do have lock nuts on them. There, yeah. So if it's turning smooth like that, you're good to go. And they are tight for me now. Um, the whole i3 design was actually built around the idea that the printer will have some play in it. A lot of people like to say, oh, the i3 design has some issues because of the way it is. It's, it's you know, it's not very stable, etc. But, but it actually, uh, they discovered it actually prints better having some slack in some areas uh, than some other printers do. Um, if you have a printer that's too rigid, then other things start to crop up as being problems. Um, things that the i3 being not as rigid is able to kind of like uh, uh, absorb through small movements. Uh, so these little, oh, I'm not even there yet. Where's my top extrusion? So here's our top extrusion. It's got two holes on each end. That's where, that's where we're gonna be putting our screws. You want, uh, and what screws are these? M525s. So you want these to go up here. Let me make sure I'm on screen here. Um, and you see the cutouts. That's what you want facing up because that's where the screw fits. So we're going to find these M525s. Right there. And... 
Let's see. Now the M5s probably use the Allen wrench. Yep. So all we're doing right now, let me get you up there. All we're doing is tightening this down. Um, we're not making this end very tight right now because we want to get all four screws going before we tighten everything down. If you tighten one down without doing the others, uh, what happens is if the others put any pressure, uh, it can actually cause these towers to have to be forced uh, slightly apart up here. And then what will happen is as you get higher and higher in your print, it gets harder and harder for these rollers to move up and you can start having weird skipping in your Z at high heights, at large heights. So by doing it loose first and making sure all the screws get seated, uh, you don't put any unnecessary stress on your tower position. Hey, John Mack, how are you? Okay, and... And you want to get these pretty tight. So I'm just kind of spreading back and forth um, between the different screws. So I'm using the short end of my Allen key. These big screws that are part of the structural frame, these M5s, you don't want to use a driver. You want to use something with some torque behind it, such as an L key like this. The other screws, you don't need as much torque. Um, so it can actually kind of help to just use the regular screws because you don't want to over torque anything. All right. And for this, we can just slide on these little covers. And these just kind of mask the cut end of the extrusion. So they just go in the holes and they clip in. And the nice thing about 3D printing is if you lose one of these, you can print a new one. So, all right, that's that. Doing fine, just full day at home. Nice. Yeah, I've been having a full day too, man. Okay, uh, moving on. Boom. We're on step 11. I was wondering when we were doing these. So let me clean up these tools real quick. These are the tools that came with the kit. Um, because I'm giving this as a gift, I'm leaving all these tools together. So the receiver... Uh, has a nice set of tools. Oh, except the zip ties. I need zip ties to clean up the wiring. Um, but the receiver will have a nice set of tools when they open their gift. I'm not sure how I'm wrapping the gift, but whatever. We'll figure it out. All right. So we're built, more or less, we're just mounting the spool holder, which just tells you that this is like a final step here. Um, very easy to mount. Where are my... you got to open up the, this pack of these uh, weird nuts. And you need uh, two of them. You're going to have one spare. You know, they don't give you a spare of any other screw here, except they give you one spare of one of these silly nuts. And uh, it's probably because they realize if it falls down one of these channels, you might not be able to get it back. And all I'm doing is putting, preloading the screws with these, uh, with these nuts on it. Okay, and it goes forward, goes up there, and what size are these? I think it's a, I think it might be the three, maybe? Yeah. And we're just twisting these in place. I'm kind of mounting this to the left because the last one I did, I mounted it kind of in the middle, um, but I'm thinking I like it better in the left. Um, because, let me just make sure I did that right. So all you do is you untwist this and pull it off, you slide it right through the hole at the top, and you twist it on. And there we have a spool holder. I don't know if it clicks, but it's easy enough. So that's our spool holder. Uh, so you put your spool here, it comes around, it feeds in here, it comes out, goes over to the hot end, comes out and melts onto the plate. Pretty easy. Okay, step 12 is all the wiring. 
So, let's look at the back here. These wires, pretty simple. Just plug them together. It is designed to fit only one way. And you just want to make sure that it's sealed up. This wire is already done for us. We should not have to touch it. Just make sure it's in place. Okay. Uh, this wire right here, let me get you a better angle. This wire is for the motor. They don't give you a lot of slack. Like there's absolutely zero slack here. So you just want to do what you can to kind of like get it around to that motor. Yeah, they give me very, very little slack. So it's going to be a tight fit. I don't like this much strain on my wires. But we just want to get it around to this motor and insert it. Oh, almost had it. There is absolutely zero room on this. Okay. This wire uh, actually goes in the front here. Let me flip it. So we flip this around and it goes right underneath here uh, to the Z. And see if you can see that. So it goes underneath and it only fits one way, but you, you should be able to kind of tell. Okay, this bunch of wires back here, this big ribbon, let me rotate it again. When you're rotating it, don't lift it by the uh, spool holder. It, the spool holder is just plastic. Lift it by the top of the frame. So this set of wires actually goes up into all this. So, and they're marked. So you're looking for, you should have an E and you should have an X. Let's see if I can get that to focus. Focus, it doesn't want to focus. So you can see the X on one of them. So the X is this motor here, this right here. And we just want to get that to click in there. It should only fit one way. The E, let's see, focus, focus for the E. The E goes into this motor over here, the extruder motor. So there's our E. I didn't get a nice click, but it's in there. Um, and then this guy, it's marked X again. So he's actually gonna go way inside this hole. You see that white connector in there? He's actually going on that white connector. So uh, also, I don't know why, but there's a little bit of hot glue residue right here. I wanna clean that off. I don't want it in my way as I go into that uh, connector. But you just wanna shove it in there. Um, and if you need to, after you get it kind of like set into the port, so you can kind of see I'm set into the port, but I'm not fully in, you can take a screwdriver a flathead screwdriver and give it a little push just to get it to snap in. So there's that wire. This wire is going to move up and down as the whole uh, assembly moves up and down. So uh, you don't want to like tie it down or anything. You want it to be able to move up and down. Same with this wire. But we're going to tie them together because they're always going to move together. But let's see if they have any other step on this. So they don't show yeah, they don't show this next part. And I don't know why, but they don't show it. So this next part, we need a, a piece out of here. Actually, we need a few pieces out of here. Come on. All right. So you want to get one of these. And you want to get two of these. And they don't show this in the manual at all. So uh, this is a good part of this. Or at least I didn't see it. Maybe I missed a step. But this is the second time I've built it and I still haven't seen it in the manual. You want to thread this on here. Ideally, uh, you, you do want to give it a little twist with a wrench. But be very careful because this is plastic and you'll crack it. Uh, then you want to take this end. Make sure it's cut squarely. If it's not cut squarely, you want to very carefully cut it squarely with a razor. Um, and you want to push that all the way in, all the way in. Um, and then you want to pull this sleeve right here out. And with that pulled out, you want to put a little blue clip there. And we'll rotate the printer. Uh, we didn't do this wire. This is in the manual. This wire right here, 
hooks up to um, port number three. So when you look under here, I don't know my blue clip. When you look under here, uh, these ports are numbered. This is number one, so the last one's number three, and that's where we want this wire. So let's get our wire up here and plug it into number three. It only fits one way, um, and you just want to slide it on there. It doesn't clip in, it doesn't click, it just goes in. I was going to look at, I think this will fit in the extrusion. I think I lost my blue clip. I see it. I don't know if I'll be able to get it out. There we go. Okay. Sorry about missing that one wire. Uh, and then this one here, uh, kind of the same thing. You just want to make sure that it's fully seated. Um, and you want to put the clip in here. Come on, clip. There we go. So that's clipped and the other one's clipped. Um, and when you tug on this tube, it really shouldn't move that much. It should not move up and down. It's okay it's moving vert vertically or horizontally or whatever. That's okay, but you don't want to move it up and down. All right. Uh, tell him hi later. Sweet. Uh, where are we? We have all this. Um, this also I don't think is in the manual. So this wire here that's dangling, you want to tuck this in right here. So right in here on the extruder is a holder for this wire. You want to kind of put it in there and kind of rotate it until it's like really held in there. Now you'll notice, now that that's mounted there, these wires are kind of going toward the outside. They're staying away from the bed. We don't want the bed hitting it. We don't want the bed doing anything with those wires. Um, so that's good. They're kind of staying naturally to the outside. If you twist it, oop, got a wire in your way. If you twist it, this, this assembly too many times when you put it together, to untwist this wire, you're going to have to kind of take it apart and untwist it by hand. So let's go ahead and maybe apply a little zip ties. So right here, these wires are always going to travel together. So I'm going to zip tie them together. And the idea with uh, zip tying them together is it just helps kind of relieve strain from all of them together. They're all now working together to hold each other up. So if one is worse than the other, then they'll be fine together. Um, and if you wanted to, you can zip tie it a second time down, down lower. Maybe I'll do that. And we'll move on to uh, calibrating the printer, uh, which is not very difficult at all because uh, with this printer, all you have to really do is make sure that the bed is level. Um, but we do have to hit set the Z height. So we'll do that. All right, clip that zip tie. So these are good. Everything there is good. Just double check some things here. So as the as the motor assembly moves up and down, this wire does too, no problem. It doesn't interfere with anything, it's not catching on anything. We're able to move up and down. Now let's turn here. Now we see our nozzle here, right? Now what we want to do is keep turning this knob until we hear a click. So that's pretty good, I think. So, I'm just going to double check that because uh, the yesterday I had to like really lift it up, but today it looks like it's not even going anywhere near low enough. So what I'm going to do is loosen these two nuts over here on the the Z uh, uh, end stop. So you hear that click? That click means we're at the bottom. 
And it's fine if it has to stay there, that's fine, but that is a little bit of a gap. I wanna close that gap up just, just a little bit if I can. So that is my three millimeter. And see if it'll go down at all. And it did, it went down just a little bit. Again, we wanna make sure it's tight. So I used the three millimeter to loosen this up and push it down just a little bit. Now, the click is just a little bit lower. So all we wanna do is turn it slowly until we hear that click the first time and look at where we're at. So we have a little bit of a gap there. And to fix that gap, we're gonna turn these wheels that you see here, these wheels under the bed. So first we'll come over to this left side and we see where it's at. It's off the bed by quite a bit. We're gonna turn this wheel until it almost touches the bed, until we can almost see no, nothing, no light under there. Then we're gonna slide over this way and do kind of the same thing to this side. Make sure we're going the right direction too. Whoa, that's not good guys. See, I thought it was low. All right, so why are we low? There is a problem here. What am I missing? Well, when in doubt, let's see what happens if we power this machine up and we tell it to home, because I think we're at home, because yeah, we clicked. So we should be all the way down. Uh, lowering the Z, I don't think it's possible. Let me see. So looking at the other machine, they're both pretty much in the same position. do it for the back. Maybe we're just not in line enough yet. Okay. It's weird how uh, different builds. Oh, that's very weird. All right, we have a problem here. That is very weird. Everything's in line, but this thing is absolutely like off. absolutely a problem here Ooh. maybe something about the X axis or the Y axis isn't mounted right be back later it's workout time have fun working out Sean so uh, everything on the build looks proper everything looks straight uh, but for some reason we're not quite level here Wondering what it is. Looking under the bed, the rollers seem good. 
the whole Y seems firmly attached. So I'm wondering if this isn't level. Um, I mean this, if this isn't staying level or this isn't staying level. But right now, like with this back one, we're super, uh, We're super low, and it's still not um, like yeah. That's the back one has to be tightened a lot. It doesn't make sense for one corner to need a lot. The front one needs to be loosened a lot. This one needs to be loosened a lot. And let's see this one. Maybe I fixed it with the springs. It's just that back one is uh, kind of weird. Okay, we might be good now. So going around, you want to check all four corners and you want to check them twice uh, because as you adjust one corner, you throw off other corners. And you just want to turn this knob until all of them are nearly touching the nozzle. Um, in fact, you could even say make them all touch and then turn them all back like a certain distance, whatever it might be. Uh, for you, you could say, oh, I want to turn it back one-eighth of a turn or one-quarter of a turn. And that's fine. That's just your squish. Um, all good to go. Let's go ahead and look at printing with some filament here. So let me plug it in. Oh, I wanted to see if I could figure out a way to tuck this wire up. See that wire there? That bothers me. So I think there's a way I could at least tuck it in. This back extrusion here, like just shove it into that channel there. Maybe by giving it a little fold, I'm folding it in half. See how I'm pinching it? And then maybe shove that in there. Get it to stick. I mean, nothing wrong with that cable. I just don't want it just sitting in the middle there. So that's working pretty well. That, that's pretty good. Um, it should at least not, uh, oh, there it goes. <laughs> I was going to say it should at least not slip out, but it slipped out. I'm sorry, my hand's in the way there. So let's try to get it back in there. I'll use a ball end. I'm using a, a three millimeter ball end, which um, three millimeters should be uh, thick enough not to damage the cable because um, you don't want to damage it. So. That should be good enough. I just don't want it falling out, um, and that should hold it. Uh, if you have a big fat zip tie, you could probably zip tie it. Okay, power time. Sorry, just cleaning up all these little wrappers. cord and I'm going to use the red filament that I have over there on the other ender and we're just going to use that to do some prints. I tried using the white filament, this, the crappy little sample they give you. Um, it is a crappy sample. Yesterday it printed okay but the problem with the filament is it, uh, the problem with the filament is it, it's very brittle and it, it broke up overnight without anybody touching it. It was just sit, sit, sitting there in the machine and it just kind of decided to break up overnight. Okay. So, here we go. We have the filament loaded right there and we take it around and 
Uh, this is another trick here. Let me see if that's going to show up on screen. So if you you shove it in a brass hole over here, and when you get to the other end, it likes to jam up right there. But what you can do is if you cut an angle like this, so the the angle is pointed um, toward the back of the printer, and then you put it in, it will go, or it has so far, um, it'll fit into the, the mount. My angle might be too tight for it. <laughs> there it goes. And then you get it, and you can see it running into the tube there. So, and that's how you know you're in, in the hole. All right. I'm trying to get this to kind of stay up a little bit. Uh, you can squeeze the lever, and it makes it easier to load it. And you just want to shove it all the way in until it reaches some sort of stopping point inside the uh, nozzle. Um, and then that's how you know you're in there. Just trying to straighten up their their existing wiring like this this uh, PTFE is almost too long it doesn't need to be that long but that's okay all right let's power on there's our screen okay we'll go ahead and say um, prepare and auto home and it should take us over here and somewhere where we leveled it or somewhere where we think we leveled it it should stop all right so right now yeah there's a gap there so it might actually be too big of a gap but we'll go for it printer is ready we're going to do a first print so first thing we're going to do is tell it to heat up so we go to prepare and we scroll down until we say preheat PLA. And we say preheat PLA. You hear some fans and stuff kick on. Uh, at this time, we're going to go ahead and take our card. Um, I'm going to maybe print uh, the stringing test that I did earlier. So this is a test file I built earlier to just make sure things are kind of like uh, calibrated properly. I didn't make the, the model itself. I just prepared it for the ender. So let's say, where is it? String G code. I think I did that one. The only reason I'm doing this file is because I know it's quick, because I don't have all night to uh, do this. How long has the stream been going? What are we up to? I don't know how long we've been going. I can't see it in here anywhere. Oh, there it is. Hour 32. Not bad. Okay. Uh, this is the card it comes with. And tech. And it, and it comes in the bag. And it comes in the end of this. So you want to use this to load it from your computer. And then take it. And it has files on it already. You don't have to use you know, something from your own computer to start. But take it and stick it in there. It goes in upside down, meaning the pins are up. You just stick it in there and you push it with your fingernail until you hear a click. And if you don't hear a click, you didn't do it right. It can be tricky sometimes. There we go. Click. All right. Now we come to our screen and we want to print that file. So we're heating up right now. Uh, all The only reason I'm heating up right now is I want to kind of get some filament to come out. So let's do that. I'm going to prepare, move axis, move the Z, go one millimeter at a time, and just move until I'm up off the bed. And I come over here, and this is how you should load your filament. I'm gonna squeeze the lever and push the filament until I see it come out of the end. And there we see it. Now, the, when it comes out of the end and it's red like that, and there's no other color coming out, it means they didn't test the, the uh, hot end at all, you know, from the factory. Not a big deal. Uh, but uh, if you get another color than what you're putting in, 92 minutes. Thank you, John. If you get another color than what you put in, all it means is they tested it in the factory. 
So we're going to go up, we're going to go up, and we are going to do uh, main. And you see it says no card. That's just because we haven't um, told it there's a card in there. We've got to go down to init card, and we do the init card, and then we can now print from TF. And TF stands for trans flash. It's a, it's a term not really used anymore, um, except by apparently Chinese uh, manufacturers. But uh, print from TF. And we're going to look for our um, file that I prepared. And it's there, string test. Now, I eyeballed the leveling of the bed. So this is absolutely going to find out if the bed is level, what it needs to be. Um, first thing it's going to do, because of, this is how my file is set up, it's going to heat the bed to 60 degrees. So we're at 49 degrees right now. You can see on the uh, top right. And it's going to slowly climb to 60. Then it's going to heat the nozzle to 210, I believe. Um, so we'll see all that happen. And then we should start seeing some prints come out. Sorry for all the, the jumbling of the, the camera there. Uh, if you want to see how I made this file and how I made other files for the Ender 3, just check out my stream earlier today. Uh, it, it came out really well. Uh, Baby Yoda looks amazing. This is off the profile I built today. Um, this was done with the Prusa Slicer, and he came out very well. Um, you have a little bit of roughness from where supports were on the ear, um, and a little bit of roughness where the hand is. But other than that, uh, he looks very good. Very, very smooth. The filament is by Atomic, if anybody is curious. All right. So we should be almost ready. We're heating up to 215 degrees on the nozzle. You do not want to touch the nozzle. We are at 216 degrees, so it should start any minute now. Now we want to watch to make sure that we're sticking to the bed. Um, because I eyeball leveled it, well, I can already tell you that I'm not low enough. Uh, however, it might be enough to succeed, but I'm not getting enough squish. So some stuff isn't sticking as well as it should. Uh, this printer is a little bit loud. Um, the loudest thing on the printer is probably the fan, not the uh, motors. Although you can hear the motors whine. I don't know how well they're coming through on the uh, microphone. But the motors do make that whine noise. Creality makes a silent board that you can put on, uh, which will make the motors quieter, but the fan will still be loud. On Thursday, I turned the printer up to 300% speed, and it was still able to print successfully. The print had a few problems, though, at 300% speed, and I'll show you. So you saw how smooth uh, Baby Yoda was. Check this guy out. He has, like, these little ridges on him. If I can get it to focus at all. Come on, focus. Maybe it's just the white, the bright light. Maybe I'll shadow it a little bit. See all those ridges in there? 
That's because it's at 300% speed, and I think those ridges are actually um, the extruder uh, where it's doing layer changes, and I think it's um, probably just shooting too much plastic, and that might be able to be adjusted out. So you might be able to get this thing to run at 300% speed and still get a good print um, by changing how it starts and stops layers. I'll need to do more testing to figure that out. So there's the extruder going. The extruder is uh, what's essentially feeding plastic in and out. And uh, when you see it reverse sometimes, that's it about to make a move, so it's pulling the uh, filament back so it's not continuing to ooze out. Um, this is the hot end. Uh, the hot end has a fan on it to keep the top of it cold because if, uh, if the top gets hot, the filament will become jammed inside. Um, and then on the side is another fan and it's called the part fan. And that part fan blows on the, the stuff or the hot plas plastic coming out. Um, and it's doing that because it needs that hot plastic to solidify for the next layer. Um, this stringing test performed very well earlier on the other Ender 3. I expect this to perform the same, and we'll find out. Sorry, I'm shaking the printer a little bit. I'm trying to get this end cap to really sit on there tight. So this is going very well. We're not really getting any stringing in there. I wonder if I can get it to focus more up here. And this is very similar to what we saw earlier on the other ender. So I think the profile I have is, is doing very well. If you guys have any questions about this uh, this printer, or if you guys want me to show you any anything else with uh, with this particular printer, let me know in the comments, and I'll make other videos for it. Um, my normal printer is Prusas, uh, and I have some other printers available too, such as the Railcore. So um, any of those sort of printers are available for you to play for for me to make videos with. So go ahead and let me know. Uh, if you want to see anything like that. Earlier today, I did a uh, build of a PC that was that's really meant to be a budget PC for some gaming and for 3D modeling and 3D engineering. Um, so if you want to go back and look for that video, that's out there too, and you can kind of watch me put together this, uh, this computer. Um, the other video today I did was I showed how to set up a profile for an Ender 3. So if you have an Ender 3, or even if you have an, another type of printer that's out there, you can use the exact same method I use to set up a profile for it in Prusa Slicer. Prusa Slicer is really nice because they come out with new versions all the time with new features and, and better printing. Uh, that's why I kind of wanted to stick with it. Kira is also nice, but I'm kind of stuck in the Prusa world with my other printers, so I wanted a single interface. Uh, and next video that I'm doing, um, the next video will be a video on how to make 
a speed profile, and this is going to be something to print, you know, as fast as possible, uh, but not necessarily uh, uh, look very good. It's it's really going to be about uh, uh, just getting the object out as quick as possible. Um, and so we'll go through that and we'll talk about different methods of doing that and how to optimize some of that. I'm not going to show you an exact answer necessarily. I'll show you what I was working on. Uh, but it will give you the, the right sort of start to maybe instead of saying, okay, I'm trying to go for a 15 minute bench sheet, but maybe you just say, well, I want to go to a half hour bench sheet. Um, but you can use some of the techniques I use to get to that half hour mark. A normal bench sheet prints in about one and a half hours. So when we say, oh, we're going to take a bench sheet and print it in 15 minutes, uh, that, that changes some of, uh, some of the things going on there. And we'll look at all of that on the next video. Almost done. Uh, we, I have the original that I printed on the other ender, uh, so we can compare them. This is the one from the other ender, so we can compare the two to see how they work, how they look. Uh, you can also see like how far along we are by comparing the size here. I'll get them at somewhat the same perspective. If you have time, follow me on Etsy or sorry follow me on Twitter I was just looking at something uh, follow me on Twitter graybeard underscore 3d uh, you can also uh, like and subscribe to this channel so you can be notified next time I'm doing a live stream uh, you can uh, ring the little bell down there uh, also leave comments below if you want to see anything else or if you think I did something wrong on this assembly or maybe if you have a tip for me that I didn't think about um, this has worked out very well for me. This is two for two for the Ender that, you know, it worked out very well. Um, very little build problems. I am curious what happens when more dust and dirt and grime gets on these rollers. Um, it might detract from some of the print quality. Uh, but uh, other than that, I mean, it, it was a very easy build. It's something you could do with your kids in probably an hour or two. Um, <sighs> All right. Sorry, I was just m messaging my mom. She's my mom has some sort of Starbucks coffee press or something, but I don't drink coffee. We're almost done here. This is it. This is the last bit. That's it. Alright, it looks like it might be just slightly stringier than the last one. Let's see what we have. Since it's a magnetic bed, we can kind of just twist it. Alright, so there we are. 
we have just a little bit more stringing here and that's fine so if you if you watch the profile video let me make sure I get focus here maybe I won't get focus um, if you watch the profile video we set the retraction to five millimeters if you get stringing at five millimeters all you do is set your retraction to maybe like 5.5 millimeters um, you don't want to go too far but you do have some wiggle room there to play with so you can possibly get rid of that stringing the other thing you could do to get rid of the stringing is to just wipe it off with your hand for the most part now this one also has a little dot there I don't know if that's showing up and maybe a little rough dot right down there on this one um, those are potentially more serious like this this wispy stringing uh, the wispy stuff you can just kind of like uh, pull off or you can use a heat gun to get off uh, and you'll be fine but those uh, these these thicker dots here they're not going to work with a heat gun you're gonna have to clip them off or something um, so those are probably areas of concern I would just all I would do is change the profile to maybe go to five and a half millimeters and then you're probably good if that still doesn't work it could mean the nozzle is slightly not round and if that's the case change the nozzle it came with a bunch of spares go ahead and try a different nozzle um, but here they are side by side so this is the one I just did and this is the one from earlier I did pull off some of the wisps on this one but it still looks like it came out just a little bit cleaner it doesn't have any of those little notches on it same exact file so uh, it could be the nozzle it could be this extra length of tube this tube is a little bit longer than the other one I believe uh, could be anything like that so these are things that we want to just look at and the first place I would start is just change the uh, retraction to five and a half so that's it we built an under three we uh, leveled the bed uh, we uh, you know set the Z stop we tightened up the rollers where we needed to and we went through a couple other tips and tricks if you missed them and we did our first print test uh, using the profile that we created earlier today uh, yeah I forgot this profile does not turn off the bed um, prepare and what we want to do is just cool down so there's your cool down option if you ever heat it up and you change your mind you can cool it down all right so that's pretty much it for this stay tuned we're gonna have another video very soon uh, talking about making a speed benchy it's gonna happen sometime tonight uh, maybe in about 30 minutes uh, it might take a little bit of time before I'm ready for that one but thank you for watching really really do appreciate it happy holidays to everybody and stay tuned for more videos from me uh, before the uh, year is over so let me end the stream there we go